G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now, folders versus metadata in SharePoint. This old debate continues to surface. So in this session, what we're gonna take a look at is why you would choose metadata and what the benefits are to metadata when we are talking about document management in SharePoint. So the first thing we need to understand is what is metadata? Well, metadata really is data about data. So if we use an analogy, think of yourself as a document. Now you have hair color, eye color, skin color, those types of things that explain or uh, showcase who you are as a person that make you up. Now we can think of a documents in a similar, similar way. We, they, documents have properties or data about data. They might have a title, an expiration date, an author, a document owner, a category. These things are what we call metadata that help us articulate what a document is. There's different types of metadata. So we have descriptive metadata, things like title, author, keywords, structural categories, document types, those types of things. We've got administrative type of metadata as well. So things like permissions and dates and audiences. And then we've got providence as well. So source, version history, audit trails, all of these things are really what we call metadata. Now, in contrast to folders, folders are more static whereas metadata is extremely flexible in how we can organize and manage our content. Now, the problem with folders, just to name a few, we've got the complexity and I guess the, the problem with lost or duplicated documents because a single document could potentially live in multiple different folders and a user has to choose where that document needs to live. Staff waste time hunting for the right versions of documents. We also have inconsistent naming conventions. So everyone saves, saves files differently, creating confusion and things like that. So when we upload a document using metadata, we can tag it and classify it as opposed to worrying uh, intently about the naming. Folders are hard to search and hard to filter. So you need to exactly know where something lives and we need to navigate through our folder structure to find that document. And automation, right? So no automation is possible around folders. So they can't trigger workflows or approvals or that type of business process. So why do we use metadata in SharePoint? So all the reverse reasons, right? So improve search and filtering. So we can find the right document instantly without guessing. We can do filtering, we can do sorting, we can create different views of document libraries, which we'll take a look at very, very shortly. We've got the ability to automate, um, automate the organization of documents. So documents can sort themselves based on tags that you define, all right? And again, we'll have a look at how we do that. We've got easier compliance and governance. So we can apply uh, policies consistently across different files based on that information. We've got the ability to have better reporting and insights. So we can run reports on things like document types or owners or statuses. A couple of real world examples of where metadata can be used. So HR onboarding, legal contracts, projects, and also finance. And you can see there, there's different types of scenarios. So legal contracts, we can manage contracts by client, expiry and status. Finance, we can track invoices, reports, departments, periods, or approval statuses as well. So that being said, Let's dive into some examples and some demos uh, on how and what metadata is, how we apply it, and how we go about using it. All right, so let's dive into a SharePoint document library with some metadata and let's have a look at what we can do with this metadata. So we can see here that I'm in a SharePoint document library. Uh, now this is one that has been built out with a number of columns that we can see, and this is what we call metadata. Now, if I just jump back to the homepage of my site here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a blank document library. And I'll say no, meta, no uh, custom metadata because what SharePoint does is SharePoint actually adds metadata or has metadata 
out of the box, right? So we've got things in these columns here. So you can see we've got name, we've got modified, we've got modified by, and we can even show or hide additional metadata fields that just come with the SharePoint document library. So things like created and created by, and we can see a number of other out of the box custom bits of metadata here. So if I upload a document to this document library, we can see that some of these are pre-done or automatically set for us. So you can see I've got the title, I've got modified, modified by, I've got created, and I've got created by. So these are automatically set. Now we also have versions, okay? So if I now go back to my training manuals library, we can see that I've added a column to this document library to show us the version number. And we can go back and view different versions if we want to as well. So remember the, the old way of filing where you had V1 and V2 and V3 changed by Mark or V3, V4 changed by Daniel. We don't need to necessarily do that anymore or we don't need to do that anymore because we've got versions and you're always looking at the latest version of a, any given document. Now, adding metadata to a library is fairly straightforward. We've got a few different ways in which we can do that. We can click this add a column uh, button here on the library and you can see we've got different types or different data types that we can add. Text, choice, date and time, multiple lines of text, ver uh, person, yes or no, lots of different types of data that we can add here. Okay, so we can use that add a column. Now you can see that I've already gone ahead and I've already created next review date, owner, category, subcategory, audience, and approved by. What about if we add, let's just add another date or time column here and say uh, approval date. We'll add that as a custom column, all right? And we'll hit save. Now, all of a sudden, we've got a new column in our library called approval date. Now, when we do that though, this column is only specific to this document library called training manuals. If I go back to my no custom metadata, you can see that that column isn't available in this document library because I added it to the training manuals document library. So what can we do with this metadata? First, I'm gonna upload a document to this library. I'm gonna drag and drop and here, I've already got a file with that name. So I'm gonna drag and drop a file into the library. You can see that that has now been uploaded. So if I scroll down, you can see that I've got this survey results file added to this library, okay? So I can select this, click on details, or I can click the three little dots, click details, or I could go to properties and I'll get the same result, all right? So we can see here that I can say and set my metadata on the properties pane. I've got the title, I've got a manual ID if I wanted to add it, I've got a category where I can change the category. I've got an audience, so this relates to admin staff. I might have and set an owner called Frankie and I'm going to leave, uh, I'll put approved by by me, but again, this could be automated. All right, the next review date, I'm just gonna say is the 29th of October. And I am going to say it was approved on the 21st, all right? So I've now added my metadata and that has now been set. So we can see here that those, those have now been set. Now, another way of doing this is I can edit this in grid, in grid view and this puts this library into like a, almost like a spreadsheet type of view. And then I can use this approach and I can even drag and drop this drag these up, I might drag these down, and we can sort of complete this metadata now based on different values. And it's it's almost acting now like a, like a spreadsheet where we can fill and automate and populate all of our columns or all of our fields here, okay? I'll exit, exit grid view, and now we are set. Now, this is a, a big flat library at the moment. Now, one of the powers and benefits of metadata is that we don't have to go hunting and searching and going through folders. What I can do is I can say, right, I'm looking for a training manual for compliance. So I'm going to choose compliance. And here 
you can see that I've got two training manuals for compliance. Or I might say I want compliance and ethics. So there's my training manuals based on compliance and ethics. I might want to then go down to a, a, a subcategory called uh, best interest duty. I'm going to apply and then all of a sudden I've got my three documents. Maybe I want to go even a step further and go, I only want new hires. So there is my filtered view of that document library and I can get to that nice and quickly. All right, I'm going to clear that. The other way is using this little filters button up here. So I can say, click this filters button and then I can use this pane to then do my filtering for me without having to do the um, the filtering based on the columns at the top. So we'll just wait for this to load and then we can pick and choose some different filters that will be available for me, all right? Let's just do that again and I'll hit filter. All right, so the filters pane is now visible. So what I can say is now I can go, I want ethics, I want uh, DDO, and there's my filtered view. I'll untick these, or I might want to say, let's say it's cybersecurity, but I want the audience for new hires. So there's a training manual for cybersecurity for new hires. See how much easier that is than trying to navigate and try and decide where in a folder structure that might be. Now, in addition to this filtering um, option, we can also create views. So I can go up to my views drop down here and I can say, create a new view. Let's call this uh, new hires. So I want to create a view that has the audience of new hires. So I'm going to say filter by new hires. So there's three documents there that have been tagged or classified or set for new hires. And I am going to now save that view. So I'll save that view of new hires. Now we can see that under my drop down at the top here, I can go to all documents, which is everything. I've got my, um, let's just refresh this to make sure that the new hires comes. And there it is, I've got new hires. There's my documents. I've got cyber modules here for advisors. So this is a double filter. So I've got cyber security set and I've got advisors set as well. All right. Now, all of these views actually have what we call addresses or URLs. So I'm going to take the URL and copy that for new hires. I'm going to go back to my home page. And I am going to, to edit this page. This is just a normal SharePoint page. I'm going to add a new link and I'm gonna say from link, I'm gonna paste my address in there or my URL in there. I am then going to say new hire training manuals. And I'll just leave the icon as it is. And we now have a link for the new hire training manuals. I'm gonna republish this. And now my little dashboard, new hire training manuals, and I go directly to that view, not the entire library. Same thing here, cyber for advisors. There is my view called cyber for advisors. And it's already got that filtering set for me. No need to navigate through folders, inside nested folders, trying to work out where a file is. I can then create a really nice user experience. Now, the last thing we're gonna to touch on is around maybe some business processes. So we can see that we've got this date column called next review date. I'm gonna select this, or I'm gonna see that we can do our filtering older to newer, right? So I'm gonna go uh, older to newer, and it changes the, 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 the sorting of this. Then I'll go newer to older, and I've got this view. Now, what if we actually wanted to do some type of automation? So I might want to say, create a rule. Let's create a rule. Now, when a date approaches, so what we've got the ability to do is, let me just manage my rules here. We've got the ability to create some automation processes. All right, so I'm just gonna manage my rules. I'm going to delete this rule 
and I'm gonna create a new one. So when a date approaches, let's say 30 days before the next review date, I wanna send an email to the owner of the document to review it, and I'm gonna hit create. So now, all of a sudden, 30 days prior to the next review date, the owner is going to get an email notification to say, this document's up for review, you need to go and review it, for example, all right? The other next step would be to create an, a, an approval automation using Microsoft uh, Power Automate. We could do that on an automated fashion, all right? So that could be running consistently. Or we do have the ability, let me find the library here, it's on SOAs. So I've enabled approvals in this document library. Now, this piece of metadata gives me the approval status. I can say, let's submit this. But there's the file name. I wanna say require responses from, I'm gonna say Frankie, and I could add additional recipients if I wanted to, and then I can submit that document for approval. You can see it in the bottom here, it's creating an approval request, okay? Now that approval request is going to go to Frankie. He's gonna get an email notification to say that I have requested uh, his approval for that particular document, all right? So we'll wait for that to get, uh, get sent and created. This is the first time I've run it on this library. So it's gonna take a little bit of time to just to get itself sorted and then it will send that approval. All right, so that has now been created. You can see that the approval status has changed to requested. And if we go to Frankie's email, what we will see is we will have um, a request from Daniel. And I'm just gonna jump into Teams as well. So let's open up Teams and we'll do it from the Teams interface. So Teams has a really good uh, approvals and you can see down the bottom right hand here, Daniel Anderson sent you a, a request for approvals. It adds it to my activity feed. There's the activity. Now here it is. I've got the document that's been sent to me. I've got the uh, audit trail here and I can reassign it if I wanted to or I can simply approve it. So I'm going to submit that and you can see that I've got this approvals here. That's the document that was just sent for approval, okay? Now, that's now been executed and has been submitted. I'm gonna refresh this and I've just got a little notification in my Teams because I sent that, uh, sent that request that it has, been, um, it has been approved, all right? So now that that's been approved, this approval status will change from requested, all right? So we'll just give this a little bit of a, a, a refresh and then what that's going to do is it's going to change. And there it is, it's been approved and nice color status and we do have um, the ability also to then filter by, etc., etc. all right? So there we go, metadata in SharePoint, extremely beneficial, very powerful, um, and hopefully that gives you some indications and some guidance on how to use it and what it is valuable for. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.